No break. Unless you want to take a break. I don't need a break. Okay. <coughs> okay. So WordPress 3.0 is coming soon. It's been coming soon for a while now. <laughs> But not the longest we've ever waited for a release. I think that it's it's definitely been longer. But there are some really cool things coming. Um, does anybody use a Woo theme? Anyone? No? Couple? If you have a newer version of a Woo theme, it has a pretty slick menu builder to create the menus, your navigation menus. Um, WordPress as it stands. <laughs> gives you kind of rudimentary tools to work with. You can list categories and you can list pages. You can exclude some pages from that list, but to add things to it is tricky. It's not real easy. There are ways to do it, but you have to kind of trick the system a little bit. So one of the things that was decided was to improve the menu options so that you can add an external link to your menu, or you can mix up the pages and the categories. So in the new menu builder, and, and I'll bring up WordPress, uh, WordPress 3 installation so that we can play with it a little bit. This is, oops. <coughs> it's really cool, but the, they, they could have written it from scratch, had the core development team write it up from the beginning. But people that had used the Woo themes uh, menu builder liked it. And so the decision was made, and Woo Themes was approached, and they agreed to release their code to be rolled into the core of WordPress. So it has a more WordPress look now than, than a Woo Themes look. There's a little difference between the styles, but, but it's basically their code that was used to pull in most of the functionality and then tweak to, to you know, align really well with what WordPress is doing. So that's... That, I think, is the coolest feature coming in WordPress 3. Another feature that's coming that is probably not going to be as widely used, but still has some potential for being pretty cool if, if some themes really take it and run with it, or, or plugins, is custom post types and taxonomies. Custom taxonomies have been around, but the, I'll, I'll explain what they are. Uh, let's say you have a movie database, OK? This is like the ultimate, this is the description that everybody uses because it works so well. And you wanted to be able to tag that, and you were going to do a review of every movie ever made. I don't know if you could do that, but... And you wanted to list actors, and you wanted to list directors, and you wanted to list film companies or whatever, you know, component. But you didn't want to just use tags because then they all get jumbled together. So with custom taxonomies, you can make a taxonomy called actor. You can make a taxonomy called a director, producer, whatever. So then you can create like a, a database of cross-referenced movie reviews by tagging them appropriately. Why do we with, call them taxonomies and not fields? Why not what? Fields. Fields? But like custom in a regular fields? database. <laughs> um, well, not really well, taxonomies describe hierarchical things like in biology. And, then right? fields. You know, fields could be anything. Fields is yeah. just an abstract. So the title yeah. is a field. Uh, the content of your post is a field. But the taxonomies do more than that. They're smart. They do a lot more than just the way they're, they're higher. They uh, and they provide a hierarchy. They truly will be hierarchical in WordPress three. Previously, they were all like tags. So you can make a nice tag cloud, but it was all in one level. In WordPress 3, you get you can actually turn them into a category system as well with, with nesting. Yeah, that's actually how you describe what you were saying, category. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, where po custom post types come into play is right now you have posts and you have pages. So you can either have a post or you can have a page. With the custom post types, let's say you have a site that reviews movies and reviews games and reviews, I don't know, books. widgets, books. <laughs> that goes with it. Well, you could create a post type for books. So then you would have posts and pages and books. And you can add movies. And you could add games. So you could have these completely separate 
um, post types for each of these things that could each have their own set of taxonomies. So where books, you might want authors and publishing houses, and movies, you might want directors and actors. You wouldn't have them all getting mixed together. They can be separate from each other. Are you going to be able to do uh, custom template files for each branch of this taxonomy? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Did that involves coding, but yes, you'll be able, you can, it's part of the hierarchy. I think it's in there, isn't it? Yeah. Taxonomy. Percent. Oops. Taxonomy, taxonomy term. Uh, so yeah. there's taxonomy. And single post type. And single post type down here. So you can actually create custom template files for for your different post types and taxonomies. Okay. Sorry, could you repeat that? Taxonomy.php <coughs> is essentially a page template for it's a for a custom. it's a theme template, <laughs> not a page template. Okay. Um, so single dash post type, which would be like single dash movies, if movies was your post type. You could have that output differently than you would have your regular posts, like your blog posts output. Okay. Okay. There is a plugin available that's going to make it a lot easier to make these custom post types from Web Dev Studios. I tried it. It's pretty cool. The trick is to actually get it to the front side of your website, and I haven't gotten that far. So, but to actually create them and to create the posts in these different post types, it's kind of cool. And for some people, it's going to be really useful if you want to be able to, to segment your, your content into different types of content, not just categories. Is that kind of like what um, Pods does? Um, the guy who worked camps on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I really haven't had time to take a good look at pods, so I can't really say. I know that it does that type of stuff, but I haven't looked at it carefully enough to answer your question. So pods sounds really cool. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I have a dumb question about the taxonomies. So when you explain that you have movies and games and books, and then you have these different categories, how does that manifest on the page? How do you... Well, that's the ultimate question. and, and I, I haven't seen this being done very effectively yet. So this is new. This is new stuff. So I think it'll be up to the theme developers to take it to the next step and, and show us some ways to really implement it. So you would create a, a query, basically, that would pull your custom um, post types and display them in any way you would display any other post. In the, in the query, you can actually say post type equals whatever. So, but it, it does involve some extra coding. Um, yeah, so when is WordPress 3 supposed to be out? Well, <laughs> originally they said that it was going to launch with WordCamp San Francisco, which is in two weeks. I don't okay. think it's going to make it. So sometime in May. So <coughs> if we upgrade our sites to WordPress 3, it's not going to mess anything up. I'm using it. <laughs> well, couple, first of all, make sure you back up, back up that yeah. could be database before you do it, and um, I would disable your plugins, because mm -hmm. plugins, just when you do any major upgrade, some plugin authors just, some plugins just may not be compatible. <coughs> if your plugin's not compatible and you upgrade to 3.0, you're going to see, you may get white screen. You may get white screen. Back up the whole so site. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I back up the whole site. What? It's, you know, so 3.0 will be out soon. Yeah, the beta is out now. Mm -hmm. It's being beta tested, and they're being a little more cautious with this release than they have in the past. They're changing the, the development cycle just a bit so that there's, they close the feature freezes sooner, and they do more testing before they go to beta, and they have a longer beta period to catch anything that might. Now, this also is a pretty major release because we're adding some really major functionality to, to WordPress. It's with more the, like a CMS now. More and more. Mm -hmm. All right. So the other really big feature change is multi-site. Okay. Um, 
where you used to have WordPress and WordPress MU if you wanted to have more than one site running on a single WordPress installation. Now it's all going to be just one package. It's all been merged together, which is good for WordPress because it means that the people that had been developing that other proc, that other set of scripts that were almost WordPress but with some differences, everybody's together now. So you have a bigger group of people working on the code, which is always a good thing as long as you have good management. And I think that the WordPress, is, I think one of the reasons WordPress is so successful is that that you have really strong leadership. So, <coughs> multi-site, previously called multi-user, there's some terminology changes, it's going to make it so that you can have one WordPress with multiple websites. So you can have them set up as either subdomains or subdirectories of your site. With a plugin, you can even have them with their own domain names. And uh, it means that you can, instead of having five different websites that you manage, you can have five sites on one, one site, basically one, one WordPress installation. Yes? Does each site have its own database? Okay. Each, in, in WordPress MU and, and when you activate the network option on WordPress 3, it does not create a new database, but it does create a set of new tables for each site. So it's, it changes the structure of the database a little bit to make it work. You have one user, one user base, so all of your users can be assigned roles on each site, but you, you would be a user of the whole, whole thing, and you might only have access to certain areas. Did I hear you correctly that you said with the use of a plugin, you can have each of those subdirectories can have their own domain? Yep. Yep. There's a multi of uh, what is it called? Uh, domain mapping, which is it's not too hard to set up, but you want to read the directions because <laughs> it's a little more complicated than just installing a regular plugin. You have to you have to move a couple of files around and change a couple of configurations. But my test site here, actually my own site, <coughs> is running on WordPress, a uh, beta WordPress 3. And then my personal site, which I haven't updated in a million years, is running on the same database the same WordPress installation, but it has its own domain name. So, all right, so, so that's multi-site. If you've never used WordPress multi-user, MU, uh, you know, it's, it looks like WordPress with some extra stuff added to it if you're logged in as a, as a site admin or as what they're going to be calling as a super administrator. Um, it, it gives you more options to, to control who can see what, what themes are available, whether or not users can use uh, the plugin screen, some things like that. So it, it, it just it takes WordPress and it adds on to the top of it. But you don't have to use this. If you just have one site and that's all you care about, you just keep on going as you always have. My understanding though is that the upgrade process, if you're already using WordPress MU, it's going to be pretty pretty simple. It's just going to be another upgrade. Does it use less resources if you have it all in one installation or database than if you have uh, different? You know, I'm not really a, an expert on that, but I think that it would at least, if you're using PHP caching, it would at least leave that because you're caching less files. But whether or not it's really going to reduce your system, there are so many variables that your, your system load. There's a lot of variables. Chances are, if you're using a lot, of, a lot of CPU or memory or anything like that, you probably ought to take a look at your plugins because there might be something that's out of whack. Um, but it, I mean, it's, it, it, it depends on, on so many variables of, of what kind of things your plugins are asking your site to do. and how many users you're getting every day, visitors you're getting every day, and whether or not you're caching your, your pages, and 
So I don't know that um, multi-user is going to be a huge savings unless you're running about 40 or 50 individual WordPress installations. Like you had said earlier, I think the main the main benefit to, to MU is when you upgrade, you upgrade one rather than upgrade. If you sure. If you manage a whole site. load of sites, a lot of different sites, you can manage them from one admin panel. It's easy to switch between one, one site and another. Hmm? You save the human resources. <laughs> you save the human resources, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Um, the new default theme that comes with WordPress 3, like I said, is really nice. So let's take a look at that. That's it. This white box here is supposed to be an image, and the last time I did a beta update, it disappeared. So let's see if we can get something back in there. Okay. So this is a dashboard for WordPress 3 with the multi-site enabled. So here you see you have a super admin panel that lets you have a little bit more. As a super admin, you can, you can control things a bit more. And then below that, everything below there looks just like WordPress. Okay. Let's go into, under appearance, we have a few extra options here. One is background and one is header. These are new, going to be new core things that themes can, if they choose to, enable and allow you to create custom headers and custom backgrounds using the core, core process. So obviously the default theme is going to tap into that. So let's go ahead and look in here. Um, so by right now I have no image. These are the images that came with WordPress down here. So just to simplify, let's find one that looks nice. There we go. I recognize that. It's the uh, Firefox theme. That <laughs> so now we go back and now that header is in place. So if we wanted to say we had our own header, which probably most people will, I don't have much available, so we'll just go to, I like lighthouses. So we're going to upload this. It's going to crop the image. I have no control how it's going to crop the image. So if you want to have it come in as, with the way you want it, then actually yes, you, can you, you can crop it a little bit. Okay, so you can at least move it around. <laughs> so let's <coughs> and that's all there is to it. That's really, I mean, that's pretty simple. But that's that's kind of something you had in. in in the default theme before too, but this is an awful lot nicer to look at. <laughs> okay, so now we have our custom background. And we can just set it to be a color. And make it something really bright so we can see it. And if I had a tiling image to load up, I could upload it here as well. And then reload that. And now I have a red background. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are the two things that everybody wants to change. They want to make their background a different color or, or an image, tiling or otherwise, and they want to change their header. So. The default theme now does that for you. So if you just want a really basic website, you can have something in five minutes or less that looks like you, but it's you know it's just the default. So the next cool thing that we can look at from the back end is the menus. 
Now this is subject to change. Everything here is, you know, they're still working on this, so nothing is set in stone yet. Under appearance. Thank you. All right, some menus. So here we can create, I have one called menu test that I used to add three external links, custom <coughs> links, so that I could get to my demos. <laughs> um, but you can add multiple menus. You can add custom links to the menus, you can add pages, and you can add categories. I could see this being extended a little further to like add things from your link library. Taxonomy. Taxonomies. I, I think that there's a lot of room to grow on here yet, but it's a good start. Because <coughs> one of the things that you can do here is over here you can take this and let's say I want this link to here. And, you can, you can build a hierarchy for drop-downs even just by dragging things around. So now I have Builder Genesis Hybrid. I can save this, go back here. And you can order them? Yep, you can order them. And now I have a drop-down. So just like that. So it's, it's going to save a lot of people a lot of time if they need anything beyond just a list of categories and a list of pages. So just, but just like with the media gallery stuff, the first, the first rendition of that, I was a little disappointed in back in 2.5 or whatever it was when that first came out. But it's come along and it still needs work, but it's, it's progressing in the right direction and I think that's important. So. But the important thing about this is that if you're using a, if you're using a pair, uh, some type of theme framework like hybrid or thematic, they're going to upgrade the, the core thematic and hybrid to use this page menu. So as long as you, you don't have to touch your child theme at all, you just upgrade your hybrid or thematic, and you'll get that feature. Right. If you're using a standard theme, you're going to need to add some code in to take advantage of this. Otherwise exactly. you're not going to see it. Yep. Because chances are your theme is using something like list, ca list categories. Or list pages. Or list pages. Or whatever it is that's calling in that navigation. or maybe pulling in a third-party plugin even in some cases. So uh, you have to have a theme that's going to support this. I don't know who has what plans for timelines of, of implementing this. I do, I do know that Genesis, the next major release, is going to come along with three and is going to include at least the menus, an option for the menus. You're not going to be married to them. You're going to be able to choose what you want. And I mean, and that's normal for WordPress. I mean, your theme, you know, with every upgrade, of, with every version upgrade of WordPress, there's always the possibility that someone put something in the theme that you downloaded for free that was somehow incompatible with the latest release. Not incompatible doesn't take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Chances are an older theme is still going to work. Um, but, no, I, I follow you, but I mean, okay. with the 3.0, I mean, you, you don't, there's no guarantee that your existing theme well, really? your existing theme will probably so I, I, work. Why, why do we get these big red warning messages? This theme has not been tested with the current version of WordPress. Like, this plugin has not been tested with Well, the plugins version. are a totally different right. thing. Plugins tend to use things that may or may not work as from one version to another. But themes... Unless they're very advanced. Unless they're very advanced. Mm -hmm. If the theme has a lot of functionality built into it, then it's like a plugin itself, then it's there's a chance it could break. But if it's just a regular theme with a loop and page templates and, or theme templates and page templates and all that, no, probably, probably it's going to be okay. But um, some, just, just to throw out some examples of some features that, ha it, that require theme changes in order to take advantage of them, post images. Threaded comments was good. Threaded comments is still a big one. It's still a pain. It's still gravatars. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that have to be included in the theme for them mm -hmm. to do anything. The functionality, the, the functions have been added to WordPress for theme developers to take advantage of, but they don't just pop in by themselves. I mean, that's why I, on occasion, enabled threaded comments, and they just didn't seem to be threaded. Because, because they're not built into that theme. And actually... Theme, the comments, writing comments for themes used to be 
really, really, really hard and complicated. And now it's just hard and complicated <laughs> because <laughs> some of it's been simplified by an internal function. And if you're using that internal function, even if you're doing things with it before it's finished, it'll, it'll do the fit for the comments for you. But an older theme, pre, um, was it 2.7? It wasn't even that long ago. They, they're probably not going to have it. So if you're working with an enterprise solution that maybe is running an old MU site with that hundred pack of themes that floats around all over the place, <laughs> none, I don't think any of those have threaded comments in them. And you have no way of, you really have no way of knowing that. Not unless you open up that code and take a look at what's happening and can see what you're looking at. So if you upgrade to uh, WordPress 3 and then you switch over to the default theme, the new default theme, all those features will be there? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, pretty much any time. The default theme is there. <laughs> Not so much for us to use as users. It's there almost as much for that as it is for helping developers to see how to utilize the features mm -hmm. of WordPress. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a demo. And this one actually better. And it's a good demo this, this time. <laughs> Yeah. And it can be a parent thing. Yes. I mean, it, it'll work. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could use um, 2010. 2010 as the template file in your child theme, and it'll pull in That's all the it's functionality. That's going to be called 2010, 2010. or just default? 2010. No, no, no more defaults. 2010. No, 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 no more Kubrick. <laughs> and so far, they haven't given us Kubrick or, yeah, those other ones. Just, what, downloaded, just downloaded the 20. classic and default. 2010 is it. Classic and default. That's what classic and default are going. They'll be they'll be pulled. I just read this somewhere today. They're going to be sent over to the theme directory, so you can still get them. Should you want a big blue bubble say the on your? Smithsonian. <laughs> <laughs> the Smithsonian. I was going to say that too. <laughs> well, there's actually a really good article about Kubrick, about the Kubrick theme and the history of it, and when it first came out, it was amazing and totally yeah. different than anything sure. else. Sure. I, I, I remember I saw it, but it was a great article. I've Move, uh, my market has changed of the people that I work with, and a lot of these people that have been blogging or have had their websites for a really long time, they're still using a modified version of Kubrick. It, it amazes me. So they're not working so well these days. I think that over time, <laughs> code gets messy because you go in and you change one thing, and then you change something else, and you change something else. But, um, but the theme still works as long as it's not coded badly, you know. There's old themes will still work on new WordPress, not the other way around necessarily. <clears throat> yes. Um, in my navigation, I'm basically just using lists to do the drop downs. Mm -hmm. Will will 3.0 like destroy that or? Well, or it depends. Okay, <clears throat> you're using lists to do your drop downs. Are you hard coding those lists? Yeah, it's all hard coded. But it'll still work. Here. Hard coding isn't going to break, um, but you might not need the hard code anymore if you can replace all that hard coding with one little, one little line that says include menu or some. I don't know what the actual function is, but that's probably what it is. It's just a, it's a drop in. Any other questions? Do they have any other features to talk about? All thing. So, so lifestyle, this is a studio press. Studio press. So lifestyle is now a child? <laughs> lifestyle is now a child thing, yeah. And is it basically the same look wise? It's, he he brightened up the color scheme a little bit. Yeah. It was kind of dark before. Um, he changed the color scheme just a little bit and he widgetized the whole thing so that you can you can have a little more control over what displays were. For the home. <laughs> yeah, for the home page. Hi, is there a way to implement a vertical menu in 3.0? Probably um, if you built it into your theme and styled it. <laughs> There's also the widget that you can use. The yeah, widget time that you have yeah. right off it's on the left the, side. The, the only difference between a vertical menu and a horizontal menu is the CSS. Yeah. All it is is lists that are just. Um, Here, well, let's look at it. Yeah, just embed. Just, it, yeah, you can. It's just, it's just, it's just gonna be a CSS change. It's all gonna be. 
So hold on. You can see this hits sub <laughs> I don't usually use this this way. <laughs> I get it. I'll just do it this way. Okay. So here we have a menu. We have a, a div open and then opening an unordered list. And then you've got some list items. And then you've got another unordered list is the nest. And you've got some more list items. That's all it is. It's just a nested list. So, but the style sheet, and sometimes some JavaScript, but not always, is what creates that effect of drop down. Um, hiding it until it's something is hovered over. It's just a CSS trick. There's nothing really, you know, major going on there. It's a technique that's used to create navigation. So if you wanted to have a, a, a horizontal navigation or a vertical navigation, all it is is a change in how you style it. When you use the pages widget and you drag it into a sidebar, and you see all your pages. Right, and it's and they're, and they're, and they're everything except the pseudo classes. Right? right, it's exactly the same HTML as that. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same HTML as that. So I can cut that out, drop it into a text widget, and it'll be there, including the well, over and the. I mean, that's a difficult way of doing it. You don't have to do it that way. But what I'm saying is, it's it's the exact same HTML. The only difference, the reason why this is horizontal dropdowns is because CSS is telling it to be. Exactly the same code. Yeah. On our lists, Here. with nested lists, with more nested lists. Let's. Um, but yes, you could drop it into a text widget. To, I mean, yeah. text widget's incredibly powerful and can do pretty much anything you want with it. Mm -hmm. That is probably the more difficult way to do it. It's a little way to take, you know, uh, what's existing for the horizontal nav bar and then put it into a vertical nav bar, either in a left sidebar or a right sidebar, maybe change it a little. Yeah. But have the same exact colors and oh, pseudo yeah. okay. This is all except the things that are being generated by WordPress, which is the background color and the header that we, we added from the back end. This is a completely unstyled copy of this site. So now you can see you've got just a list. Now it's vertical. Mm -hmm. Now it's vertical. So I removed all the styles. And that's all it is, it's just a list. It's two lists, one, a list with a list inside of it. Okay, Daisy, can you yes. have the widgets on the admin panel? Sure. Now this is just standard, this is the default thing, so this shouldn't right. include any But you should have a navigation menu yeah. third from the right. And if you drag that over to your sidebar, uh, you can then drop your menu into sidebars or any widgetized area. Okay. I hadn't really played that far, but yeah, that's a new <laughs> widget. The menu is the same thing I've been working with. Because they said it's going to change. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to that menu. The existing menu code will still work in 3.0. Right. You actually need to replace it with another piece of code to get all these right. functionalities. So it's not going to change anything. You've got three row, you're going to have your old menu. And no, 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 I, I mean that. I, I did a fresh 3.0 install. I'm actually running a live site on 3.0, which oh, is not a life or death site. And I just oh. didn't want to do menus because I thought, well, maybe I lose that. So I didn't want to spend you know, three hours creating some menus. Um, Waste three hours. Yeah, I don't think they would. That little warning, I take those warnings seriously. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Clearly. actually. <laughs> good, you know, you're one of the only ones. That's really good. I back up my database before upgrading my WordPress. There's plenty of people. <laughs> yeah. I am plenty can of people. I, can, I just, can, I just, yeah. can I just, I'm sorry. No, it's fine, go ahead. Oh, I just realized, and I didn't realize this before, maybe this is a 3.0 thing. I have to check off all the extra table things. I use WP Backup, I think by Austin Marco. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, when I, I just added a blog the other day to my multi-user, my 3.0 site. All of those tables for that blog yeah, it's something are not in, checked off. I've got to go back in it's and not part of the backup. It's, it's not part of the code in, that he's it's checking updated, for. Right. This plugin hasn't been updated to 3.0 yet. No, 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 that's OK. But I, you have to go in and say, I want, I want this blog, and this blog has like 12 new tables. So check off those mm -hmm. two and update the backup. Because I'm getting your emails the backup twice a day, and I'm not backing up you know, blogs two, three, four, and 5. Yeah. So, so I, that's, a, that's a thing. Yeah, that's something that the plugin that author needs to correct, that he needs to be 
um, multi-site aware. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> because it does change the table structure significant, pretty one. significantly. Yeah. No, all right. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Because some, there are some tables that are common site-wide. Right. Like users. But then there's a group of maybe eight or ten tables that are per site. Yep. Which I haven't looked at the structure real recently, but well, it's... So, oh, I, I didn't think that he could do that, but now I'll ask. Yeah. I, I mean, mean it's I very I similar. That was my responsibility to go ahead and add the check those boxes to get well, those back. Well, I've used it before, and sometimes it won't include plug-in tables as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's so the same thing. Instead that, of he, he's, he, it's a, it was probably a decision on his part rather than backing up the entire database, which most people probably would want, um, to make it all, try to figure out what was WordPress, okay. which maybe was not. It's still one of the most popular. Uh, yeah, it is. There's another one called uh, DB Manager, which I think probably uses some of the core code from backup. Manager or DB backup, the, the, pro, the screens look very similar at least. Um, and I've had not the best luck with getting it to work on all sites. So mm -hmm. I don't know why, but sometimes the, the backup files are almost empty. Gotcha. Not good. <laughs> What's the invisible widget? Oh, that's a plugin. <laughs> it was something I was using mm -hmm. testing for something else. Um, it's, it's to add a, tab or a tabbed widget. So you can add tab, uh, widgets to this area and then include them into this tabbed widget. So, but that's it's just a plugin. It's not part of three. I didn't even realize I had it in, um, activated on here. So I think that's the only one in this list that doesn't belong. Do they give you the four foot of widget areas like that? This theme does. This theme does, yep. yeah. That's widget, part of the default theme. Widget areas are theme, a theme. I thought we were still in the default theme. Yeah. Are we going to, do you know if the terminology is going to change from sidebar to widget area? Because it sure looks like it from looking at this. I hope so. I hope so. It, I, the term sidebar is confusing because sidebars are not always in the side. But that's what they've been called up until now, so. But they said they were going to change it because it just made no sense. Yeah. So. Mm. Seeing it here makes me think that probably we're going to see a, a shift in the, in not the, the common. Get not sidebar the, still. Yeah, I know, and they just changed the function, and know, it still know. says sidebar. <laughs> so they made the, the, the function is like three extra characters longer, but it still says sidebar in it. I don't, I don't really know why that is. Those the bottom side. Hmm? Yeah, the bottom side. The bottom side. The, top, <laughs> the, top side. the middle side. <laughs> <laughs> so, any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you well. so much.